Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have a really interesting problem from the JE Advanced exam. And let's read it together so we know what it's about. We have a parallel plate capacitor of capacitance C, which has spacing D between the two plates having an area A. So simply, the capacitance, of course, is dependent upon its physical structure. But then, the region between the plates is filled with dielectric layers. How many? N dielectric layers, and they're all parallel to the plates, each with the same thickness, D over N. So if N is 10, it would be 1 tenth the distance. If N is 100, it would be 1 100, the thickness, uh, the distance for the thickness of each of the layers. The dielectric constant for the m layer is K sub M, which is a constant K times 1 plus M over N, and for a very large N, let's say greater than 1,000, over a thousand layers, very, very thin, each with the dielectric constant equal to this. Then they claim that the capacitance is equal to alpha times k epsilon sub naught a divided by d divided by the natural log of 2. And they want us to find the value for alpha, and alpha is going to be an integer between 1 and 9. So, of course, going into this problem, you should know a few things. You should definitely know the concept of multiple layers of dielectric material between two capacitor plates. And let's say for the simple example, when there's only two, you could then say that the electric field in any one of the layers, let's say for layer number one, is going to be what we call the surface charge density divided by epsilon sub naught. And of course, if there's a, con if there's a dielectric in there, we also have to divide by the dielectric and the charge density would be the charge divided by the area. And then we also should know that the voltage is equal to the electric field times the displacement or distance traveled through the, the layer. And so then if we then multiply the electric field times the distance, which in this case would be half the total distance between the plates, then we calculate for the capacitance, which is the charge divided by the voltage, and we end up with this equation right here, where the capacitance of the first layer is two times K1 epsilon sub naught a over d, you can also put the d below the, the, the 2 below the d, you get d over 2 in the denominator, that would be the capacitance of the first layer, the capacitance of the second layer, and now we should know that the total capacitance can be calculated as 1 over the total capacitance equals 1 over c1 plus 1 over c2 depending upon how many layers we have. So that's the concept we're dealing with here. Now there's several ways in which you can solve this problem. The easy way is to think about it this way. First of all, let's explore what this means right here. Notice if um, uh, this value m over n, m starts with 1 and goes all the way up to n. So when m is 1 and n is large, essentially this is equal to 1. So for the first layer, the constant, so you say that k sub m, uh, and that should be a small m, is equal to k, the constant, times 1 plus 1 over n. And if n is very large, essentially this is approximately equal to, to just uh, 1 times k, or simply k. Make this a small m right here, right? Uh, and if m is equal to 1, for m equals to 1. And then we go k for m is equal to n for the very last layer, that's going to be equal to k times 1 plus n over n, which is essentially 2 or 2k. So you can see that at the very beginning, if you have n number of layers and n is very large, the dielectric constant at the very beginning would simply be k, and the dielectric constant at the very end would be 2k. So the average is about 1.5k. All right, so now let's like, take a look at this equation right here, and let's take a look at the equation over here. Uh, simply, if you think about a single layer, if a single layer, then this two of course would go to one. Then for a single layer, the capacitance for a single layer would simply be equal to k times epsilon sub naught a over d. Now let's take a look at that. And the only difference is that you have the natural log of two here and an alpha there. Okay, now notice that if you think, think, for example, that it's 1k here and 2k there, so that the average dielectric constant is about 1.5, then you could say that c would be approximately equal to 1.5k epsilon sub naught times a over d, 
just simply taking the average dielectric constant. Now, of course, it's not going to be a linear function, so it's not going to be exactly that, but probably close enough. Definitely, it's going to be somewhere between 1k and 2k. Now, what does 1 over the natural log of 2 mean? Well, we know that the natural log of 2 is equal to 0 0.693. Now, how do we know that? Well, we've probably seen it enough in our classes that we just simply remember that. If you don't, well, you can kind of approximate it. Next, what is 1 over the natural log of 2? Well, that's equal to 1 over 0 0.693, and so that's approximately equal to 1.5. Now, notice this, and notice this. You realize that 1 over the natural log of 2 is about 1.5, which means that this here is really equal to this, which means that this would be the capacitance if the average dielectric constant was 1.5K, which it's a pretty good estimation, which means that we don't need anything in the front except for a 1. So based upon that, we can simply say alpha is equal to 1, and that is indeed the correct answer. Now, in the interest, of course, if you were taking the test, that's all you would care about. You could probably knock that out in three minutes and move on to the next problem. But this is such an interesting problem that I explored a little bit more. So I'm going to do a little bit more work here using this concept right here and then seeing how you can actually get this equation. Of course, you wouldn't care about that. You're just good enough in approximating, say, oh, alpha has to be one because it's definitely not going to be two and you move on. But let's think about it this way. Let's say you have n layers and n was over a thousand, then you would have a thousand of these equations. And so two represents the number of layers. So if there were n layers, you would change that to an n. And then of course, k would be equal to this thing right here. So in other words, we can take this equation, go c sub, well, you do, well, we'll take the first one, c sub one is equal to n layers times a constant, which is k, times 1 plus 1 over n, so that would be the dielectric constant of the first layer, times epsilon sub naught times a divided by d. And then c sub 2 would be equal to n, still n layers, times k, times 1 plus 2 over n, times epsilon sub naught times a over d, and so forth. And of course, you would have to do that over a thousand times if there were over a thousand layers. And then to find the capacitance, you would go ahead and solve it like this. But let's say for a moment there was just 10 layers. Let's say let n equals 10. Then of course, we'd only have to have 10 of those. And then if we were to try to calculate that, you would then say that 1 over the total capacitance is equal to the first one. So we take this right here, so that would be equal to 10 times k. Let me get out of the way here so you can see this. So k times 1, oh, wait a minute. I'll take that back. Well, now we're going to take the inverse of that, right? So it's 1 over that. So we get d in the numerator, so we end up with d in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we'd have 10 times k, 10 times k, times 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 10, um, times epsilon sub naught times a. Epsilon sub naught times a plus, now the next one would be d divided by 10 times k times 1 plus 2 tenths, which would basically 1.2 epsilon sub naught times a. And then we'll go plus, the next one would be d over 10k times 1.3 epsilon sub naught times a and so forth. So essentially what this would become, so 1 over the total capacitance would be equal to, uh, well let's see, we can factor out everything that remains constant, which would be d over 10k epsilon sub naught times a, those would all be constant, times, and now we'd have 1 over 1.1 plus 1 over 1.2 plus 1 over 1.3 plus 1 over 1.4 and so forth all the way to plus 1 over uh, 1. Let's see, uh, 1 over 2, right? So then that would be, yeah, that would be 1 over 2, like that. All right, so now if we go ahead and take the inverse of that, we'd say that the total capacitance would be equal to the 
inverse of that. Now, the way I would like to write it as follows. I'm going to inverse this, so this would be 10 k epsilon sub naught a divided by d. Remember, I'm trying to get that equation right there. Times, now here I'm going to write this as 1 over 1 over 1.1 1 .1 plus 1 over 1.2 1 plus 1 over 1.3 all the way to plus 1 over 2, like this. And then I'm going to take this 10, which is a numerator, numerator here, and place it in the denominator of the denominator. So I'm going to take this and divide this by this, like this, 10. Now notice that this whole thing right here is in the denominator. Now of course, without a calculator, you'd have a hard time figuring out what that fraction is, the, the sum of those fractions is. But of course, I use a calculator, and it turns out that this is equal to C total is equal to K epsilon sub naught A over D, and this here would be equal to 1 over 0 0.668. Now notice, we said that the natural log of 2 is 0 0.693, and I got 0 0.668 when I let n equals 10. Then I thought, well, what if I let n equals 20? So then simply, you'd go ahead and make that into a 20, you carry it on all the way, there would now be 20 of these fractions, so the first fraction would be 1 over 1.05, 1 then 1, 1 over 1.1, 1, 1, 1 over 1.15, 1, 1, 1 over 1 1.2, and so forth, there'd be 20 of those, and we add those up, when n equals, when n equals 20, the c total would become, c total would be equal to, and of course I'm getting very messy here, but let me Oh, can I do it over here? Yes, I can do it over here. Let me do it over here. n equals 20. You get c total is equal to, everything would look the same. It would be k epsilon sub naught a over d. And calculating all this when e equals 20 ended up being 0 0.681. So notice for n equals 10, we ended up with 0.668, which is kind of close to natural log of 2. For n equals 20, we got 0.681, which is even closer to natural log of 2. And in the limit, when n equals 30, 40, 50, 100, 1,000, eventually you, let, you calculate that and you would find that this would actually be the natural log of 2. So this is a natural equation you would get when you have an infinite number of layers. Even for n equals over 1,000, you'd get very close to that number. And then again, you can see that you need just the 1 in front of it, because this would be the total capacitance for an infinite number of layers with the dielectric constant going from k equals k to k equals 2k throughout all the layers like that. So it's a really interesting problem once you kind of dissect it. But of course, for us, it would be good enough to just realize that we're only dealing with this concept right here. You very quickly can determine alpha equals one. That's probably the correct answer, and you move on. And that is how it's done. <laughs> Don't you think it's an interesting problem? <laughs> All right.